Hello, everyone. This is your host, Jeremy Michael, with another episode of Make That Bloody Movie with Coffee. And tonight's episode, we'll be talking about eight ways on how to make a movie in 2024. Tonight, guys, I'm going to give you some pointers, lights, camera, action. Um, oh, and stay till the end of the episode, because I'll tell you the coffee of the night. You get to guess what kind of coffee I'm drinking tonight. Mm-hmm. It's good too. My favorite brew and with my favorite cup, my Ferrari cup. Actually, my daughter doesn't know I'm using her cup, but if she sees this video, she'll know. But until then, let's dive right into it. Okay, so eight ways to make a movie in 2024. Whether you're a seasoned filmmaker or an aspiring director, the filmmaking landscape can constantly evolve throughout the years. So grab your pop, grab your popcorn and get ready to learn about eight essential ways to make a movie in 2020. Number one, you want to embark with advancement in technology. Learn about new technology that's coming out. Today, consumer cameras are a lot cheaper than what it was before 15 years ago. Today, you can actually make a full feature film with your iPhone or smart, your smartphone or your Android. Or you can buy one of those cameras, consumer cameras that you've seen, for two grand, three grand. And actually, they got great quality cameras that shoots just like a Hollywood movie. So, when um, you're going on this journey of making a movie, you want to embrace the virtual productions. You know, with advancements of technology, virtual production techniques have revolutionized filmmaking. From utilizing virtual sets, green screens, blue screen, and incorporating CGI characters into them, filmmakers now can make their own movie straight out of their house, basement, friend's house, or home. I don't know, I, that sounds like a run-on, but, you know, I figured, you know, this is my first live video because usually I do audio, so bear with me, guys. Uh, second way is crowdfunding campaigns. Uh, crowdfunding campaign, crowdfunding campaigns in today's digital age, uh, platforms have become more popular way for independent filmmakers to raise capital for their upcoming projects, feature films, short films, and whatever their heart desires in the creative space of filmmaking or radio. Um, Utilize these platforms and connect with other people so they can support your dreams and your desires. Number three, utilizing blockchain technology. Blockchain technology has been disrupted in various industries, including filmmaking, filmmakers, including filmmaking. By utilizing blockchain technology, you can finance and distribute and copyright protection filmmakers can streamline the production process and ensure transparency, security throughout. Actually, you know what, guys? Let's just put this to the side. Forget about the filmmaking. I wanted to talk about how filmmaking has changed. I know I, I got into the eight ways we could get back to that, but I really just wanted to talk and share my thoughts on how, you, how the film industry has changed throughout the years. I've noticed that our industry has a tendency to go from making beautiful movies to now making it more commercial and it's more about getting quantity out more than quality. I feel like some stories are there still in the mix, but it's not being pushed to the forefront. It's kind of like they want to play it safe. They want to go with films that they can guarantee them returns rather than giving the audience a curveball. One, you know, they'll do a curveball one time, but they wouldn't do a curveball more often and just show the audience that there's different stories to be told. I, I, this is what I believe. And I think our industry has changed drastically throughout the years. Um, do I think it's getting better? I think we've reached a plateau in creativity and storytelling. I think. You know, there's certain parts of the industry that they're just not 
opening it up enough to allow creative stories to be told and to be shared. And I think in reality, we as all creative people should be given a voice. And because of technology, because of the internet, it has given us the chance to express who we are and tell our own stories without the big corporation holding us back from sharing our insights. And I think that's a beautiful thing. Now that we have the tools to do that, there's no excuse. You know, everybody wants to make money. Obviously, at the end of the day, you know, it's a business, just like any other business. But you got to crawl before you can run. And so when you find a group of people that believe in your vision and your passion, and you create a story that you want to express to the world, everything else will follow. It's a process. And I think we step away from that process, that passion, and that desire to tell a good story. I mean, come on, ladies and gentlemen. We stepped away from that. It's more about the dollars. But guess what? If we tell a great story, you're still going to make this. And I think a lot of egos and a lot of cockiness get in the way of this. So they sit there and they just say, oh, it's all about the money. Yeah, you know that. But if you tell a great story, you can make money. And I think that's my frustration is when I see so many secrets. There's certain movies you don't need to make sequels because a standalone movie is perfect. But if you're going to make a sequel, it got to be interesting. And I think sometimes it's just a story being dragged out and it's not giving you enough emotions to the audience to really feel and connect with the characters. And I'm not saying all franchises are like that, but I'm saying that there's some that it's just, it's just, they're just trying to pull from the original and milk it, squeeze it to a point where they can't, they're trying to get juice out of something, get, get juice out of lemonade, but you squeezed up all the lemonades. I mean, come on, that's insane. Sometimes the lemonade has no more juice and you just gotta go with something else. And I think because of ego and pride, it doesn't allow these, these guys to say, hey, let's look at the bigger picture. So they stick to what they know. But guess what? There's always a Rocky that comes out of the shadows and say, yeah, you guys stick to the same way, but I'm going to get you with a South Pole punch that you never expect from me. And guess what? I can switch it to the right hand too. Guess what? It's the same thing with writers. You never know which way they're swinging, but then when they swing a certain way and they show you that there's other, other green areas you can look at, you guys get a little bit like ooh, you see catch you off guard that's what I'm trying to say is that a lot of writers out there's a lot of talented writers out there you know and I've been happy to work with one of them which is Alex King excellent writer psychological thriller he knows his shit and he's one of those writers that gets you with the South Pole gets you with the right hand you know different styles he puts it into one you never see it coming. So that's all I wanted to share with you today is make that bloody movie of coffee. Is my thoughts on how filmmaking has changed throughout the years. Some of it is mumbo jumbo I'm saying, but hopefully you get some of the message out of this. Peace, love, and happiness. And remember, always tell your story because there's always a market for your story. And by the way, I said I would tell you the coffee of the night. I am drinking French vanilla from Dunkin' Donuts. Light and sweet, but not too sweet. Well, this is your host, J.R. Mike, and another episode of Make That Bloody Movie with Coffee, signing out. Peace, everyone.